Hello, and welcome back to Siberia 3, this time for part 6. And right now we're just standing outside the tavern in Valsambor. We're looking for Simon Steiner's workshop. We don't know exactly where it is, but we were just given directions by uh, his granddaughter, Sarah, I believe, who said I needed to, well, presumably go this way and to the left, down an alleyway, at the end of the alleyway, I think she said. So, uh, yeah, let's do just that. If I am... Oh. <laughs> it's loading. If I am misremembering that, though, I suppose, at worst, what we're going to do is just sort of explore Valsambor. It's a pretty nice-looking place, honestly. Is it this way? Oh, yeah. Okay. I can go to the right. Actually, you know what? It might be this way, but let's go Let's go to the right. Let's explore Valsambor. I want to see what we're working with here. I want to see if I get any more sort of weird flashbacks and reminders of Valadolen. It is a nice-looking place. Nice scenery, too. Oh, and by the way, I talked to everyone in the tavern, but they all had sort of generic things to say, even Captain Obo, so I decided to start the video out here. Hi there. The way they treat the nomads around here is terrible. Oh. Well, I'm glad somebody feels the same way. Right, now these doors that I'm walking past, can I use any of them? I assume they're just homes of the people that live here, right? What about this red one? It kind of sticks out. Uh, that'll be a no. Okay, well, let's just keep going. Oh, okay, yeah, the docks are over there, complete with that squid symbol, which seems to be everywhere in Valsambor. Right. It's a very, very big building, actually. So, hang on, is this like the town square or something, maybe? Seeing as there's a fountain like that. Hi there. <laughs> Maybe he knows where I'm going. Looking for cigars or some hooch? No. I'm even cheaper than the nomads. I bet you are. But I'm not interested. Ah, uh, right, okay. Yeah, let's just keep going down the streets. I'm pretty certain this isn't the way I was meant to go. But uh, the more of this place I see, the better, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, and it tucks itself round to the right, does it? Brilliant, okay. What's going on up there? We got signs. Uh, oh, some I guess of some sort of protest. Let's just take a look. Look at that giant claw up there. No you ghosts in Balsam Moor! The shopkeepers can't take it anymore! The shopkeepers are on strike! There have been ten thefts from my shop since those seven. Ah, this might be the town hall that was alluded to before. Oh. Hi there. Excuse me, what's happening here? Isn't it obvious? We're demonstrating against having the Yukul nomads parked on our doorsteps. Right. But what for? Since they came to Valsambor, there's been no end to the shoplifting and vandalism. And on top of that, their suits are bird was struggling customers. a bit. Mayor Bulyakin has to do something, and fast. We're not leaving until he receives our delegation. But why won't the mayor talk to you? Because he's a schmuck. He wants the nomads to continue their migration as much as us, but he's too afraid of annoying his higher-ups. And while he's gaining time by playing both sides of the board, we're watching our sails go through the floor. The authorities are asking the mayor to prevent the migration from continuing? Hmm. They want the Yukels to stay blocked in Valsambor? That's what people are saying, but if you want my opinion, the only thing the mayor is waiting for is someone to get rid of those savages without him having to get his hands dirty. You might be right. I'm wondering if that man with the eye patch was a member of these authorities. Right, so yeah, I'm taking it this is the uh, the town hall. So let's stay away from this area. I am still looking for the workshop. I don't want to get myself involved in anything else right now. I just want to sort of explore the place. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. What? That statue. Well, it's not the same one, is it? No. It's impossible. <laughs> Something else? If you were only here to see this, Oscar. Yes, if only. Well, I guess uh, it'll be Mr. Steiner that created that one. With the shovel. Well, Steiner and Hans, I guess. Right. So let's see. Yeah, this, I think, is actually the sort of town square, this area. Uh, some of this place looks great. Some of it looks like a wreck. What's that up there? Alright, okay. Let's have a look at that. 
Looks like a, I don't know, maybe a tram or a one of those sort of ski lift things. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> still struggling with the stairs, even though I skipped some of it. I don't like that new waitress working in the tavern at all. Really? It's kicking off near the town hall. It certainly seems to be. All right. So it was around here, wasn't it? Oh. When they shut the funicular down this ah. morning, it created chaos. This is the funicular going all the way up there. Right. Wow. And around the mountain. Uh, let's maybe take a look at it, if we can. Around here. Yeah. Oh, I suppose <laughs> I'll have to uh, provide a ticket. Welcome to our humble Valsambor funicular station, miss. I think she failed to mention that it's not running right now. Let's see. There's no way I'm going back to the clinic without Kirk's prosthesis. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Well, this is where we're going to come after we've visited Steiner's workshop then, I suppose. That's cool. Okay. Just getting the lay of the land. Oh, hang on. No. Oh, no. There's more. We're going down. All right. What are you doing? Impossible. I don't believe it. He forgot to leave it open again. Who forgot to leave what open? What are you looking at? That cart over there? Hmm. Not really sure, to be honest. This is pretty cool. I have to say, it's, it's quite nice to be away from the hospital. It's quite nice to be away from the camp. Hospital especially. Oh, what's that? Oh, Steiner, here we go. Right. <laughs> One of the only buildings with personality. Oh, this is the place, all right. Mr. Steiner, I presume. Hello. Are you Mr. Steiner? Scott Steiner. Big Papa Pump. Mm. I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Steiner. My name is Kate Walker, and I've come to pick up the prosthesis for Kirk, the Yukel spiritual guide. And well, dear Miss Walker, Dr. Efimova has informed me that the young man was not yet in any sort of condition to withstand the operation, and that... It sounds like the guy in the hospital. Mr. Uh. Steiner, are you alright? It... it is impossible. That pendant you have around your neck. Oh, right. He recognizes it. I would it. be very obliged if you would entrust me with it for a moment. Please, Miss Walker. Sure, I guess. Maybe he helped design it. Since he was working with hands. Mein Gott. An XZ-2000 automaton heart in perfect working condition. The very same. A compensating spring memory. Pendulum ventricles and small mechanical pumps. Everything seems in excellent condition. Donnerwetter! Where on earth did you steal this, Miss Walker? Uh, what? No, sorry. It, <laughs> I, I didn't steal it. What? Are you calling me a thief, Mr. Steiner? I haven't stolen anything from I think any that's what he means, yeah. This is all I have left of my friend Oscar. Give it back to me right now. Ah, so. And yet I am actually very familiar with this type of precision mechanism. An infernal precision. Incredible, unique expertise. For this was a Varlberg automaton, Miss Walker. You're preaching to the yes. choir. It was Hans Varlberg who designed this object. Tell me, did you know him? Oh, yeah. He even lived here a few years. Right. We did a lot of work together. Yeah, he did travel quite a lot, didn't he? He taught me so many different things, you know. So it is useless to try and make up silly stories, Miss Walker. And I am afraid that I am not about to allow you to leave here as long as you have not told me the truth about where this object comes from. What? <sighs> How can I persuade him? Oh, shit. He has a button. <laughs> Can't I just lean over and press the button? Uh. Well? Well, let's talk about hands. <sighs> Don't bother locking me in, Mr. Steiner. 
If you must know, the truth is that Hans Vogelberg was someone who was very important to me. I accompanied him on a very strange journey throughout Europe. Very strange. And that object in your hand is the only souvenir I have of that adventure. That proves nothing, Himmelhergott! Hans would never have given this to... Ah! Ah! <laughs> Looks like he's got issues with his own heart. R r maybe? Yeah, maybe. Mr. Steiner! <laughs> Are you all right? My heart. Yeah. Need my medication. Quickly. Just don't move. I'll go and get your medication right away. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Well, where is it exactly? Let's see. No medication in sight. Okay. Wow. You uh. You have a lot of clocks in here, don't you? What do we got here? What's that? What am I? Oh, I'm stealing from him now. Yeah, that's really going to uh, dissuade him from thinking you're a thief. Oh, what's this? Okay, hang on. A prototype for the clinic aviary? Oh, right, yeah, because he, he made the birds up there. Yeah, of course. Make yourself right at home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't mind me. I just own the place. <laughs> you're just dying over there. <laughs> right, yeah, okay, so obviously this isn't his medication. Uh, let's try somewhere else. Down there? Maybe? Anything up here? Oh, hang on. Right by the till? Yeah, yep. Oh, wow, okay. Maybe in here. What do we got? No medication. No. Next one up. What's this? Uh, again, I'm stealing. St oh, Steiner's prescription. Alright. Actually, that might be worth taking a look at. Let's see... Oh, it's not here. Oh, is it in the journal area? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, observe it. Right. Um, translation, please? Right. Ah, yes. Dr. Zamiatine. Uh, two vials of spironolarone. Three boxes of lacilactide. Capsules take daily, preferably at tea time. Right. Okay. So I'm looking for capsules somewhere. Brilliant. Let's keep looking. Am, am I against the clock? Can I take as much time as needed? That could do him more harm than good. Maybe, maybe. All right, six more to go through. Nothing that could help him. Fair enough. Why doesn't he just tell me? In fact, can I just ask him where no they are? Way. I guess I probably could. Oh, what's that a little crank? No medication. Hmm, that looks interesting. Maybe I'll be coming back for that later. <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess that's not medication either. Uh, hang on, maybe, maybe. Nothing that could help him. No, not in that little bottle. Okay. Cogs and such. There's no point. There is no point. All right, hang on. Let's just back away from this. Right? Can I speak with you? I know you're sort of like having a heart attack and everything, but my heart. I need my medication. Could you at least point in <sighs> the right direction? It's probably down there, honestly, isn't it? Oh, what we got here? Okay, got a couple things. All that clattering must get really tiring after a while. Uh, yeah, I expect so. Hang on. All right. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, we're taking the cover off. Oh, we have to manipulate the hands? Right, hang on. What's this? T. T. Okay, T. Um, all right. <laughs> Let's just back away from that. Uh, it, do I have to perhaps... Oh, God, all these clocks are at different times. Ever so slightly different times. Do I have to, I guess, put a time at the top of that thing? I suppose so. Let's let's go down here. All right, what do we got? Who would store medication in this mess? I don't know. I guess it's down here then. Still nothing. No. All right. Is that a projector screen? What's this? All right. Okay. Oh, hang. No, that, hang on. That's the um. That's the boat that we walked past in the last part, right? That's Captain Obo's ship, I think. Oh, yeah. Flick that over. Turn the lights on. Okay, that might help. Maybe the medication's stored in here? Fantastic. Fantastic indeed. No, I, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Uh, okay, so let's see. We've got some shells over here. Lots of cobwebs. 
the same what I can examine actually. Who would store medication in this mess? I get it, Kate, I get it. What's this? Is this it? I'm picking something up. A newspaper clipping. Right, yeah, of course. <laughs> time is not of the essence. There's always time for a read. So there it is. Let's have a look. Uh, again, I think I'm going to need a translation. Oh, it's about Baronor. Right. The Baronor nuclear plant. Authorities downplay the effects. Okay. I will just sort of skim through this a little bit. A minor technical incident? <laughs> oh, and those rumours abound. Right, I see. The Energy Ministry said, There's no reason to worry. I'm sure there was. The Baronor Amusement Park. 50,000. That's how many entry tickets have been bought for the Baronor Amusement Park since it opened last year. Wow. Ice fishing drama. Right. I actually haven't heard anything good about Baronor. I'm sure that's going to be a place that we visit in this game since it's alluded to so much. But, um, yeah. Right. That's still not going to help with the medication, so yeah, let's put that away and let's keep searching around. If I can <laughs> just make it to the next table. Nothing here. Oh, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Ah, uh, yep. Kirk's prosthesis. Oh, I see. But it looks like it isn't finished. Well, there you go. Something up there too. A woman's writing saying, "Grandfather, don't forget to take your medication three hours before dinner." Right. Three hour. Okay. Three hours before dinner. That's got to be for the clock, right? When does he have dinner, though? That's the problem. Right. And yeah, actually, it said that the medication is taken at tea time. Is that it? Can I not have a look at any of this stuff? I guess not. Did he have a look in the corner? I guess I didn't. But there's nothing there. Right, let's go back to the clock and let's see if we can work this out. Believe me, I'm trying to run around, but Kate, I think, just wants to see this man dead. Okay, so let's go over here again. Uh, there it is. Alright, so that's already been pulled back. Three, right, three hours. So would it be on the hour? Let's assume so. So the minute hand, let's put it up at 12. Yeah, you go, it's locked in position. Where would you usually have tea? Something like 7, 6 o'clock. So I guess it's not 4. 3. Hang on. Oh god, this is difficult to control. 3. 5. 5? Right? Something's happening. Oh. Oh, hold on, hold on. I've, I've got it. I've got a little cup, haven't I? That's... Oh, no! <laughs> it's too late. Hopefully that wasn't the only medication. Right. Yes. That's what the cup's for. Put the cup down, and let's see if we can do that again. Hopefully we, uh, we didn't run out. So... 11, 12. There you go. <laughs> Why is it hidden away like this? Definitely a friend of Hans. Absolutely. Alright. So I guess he usually has his tea at about 8 o'clock. Here we are then. Steiner's medication. We've got it. Brilliant. <laughs> got there in the end. You could have told me about that, mate. <coughs> All oh, right. Okay. Let's uh, let's ease your worries. There you go. There it is. Happy now? Thank you for your precious help, my dearest Miss Walker. I'm afraid I may have judged you somewhat hastily. Don't mention it, Mr. Steiner. Tell me about the prosthesis. I need to take it back to Kirk very quickly. If, of course, you agree to let me have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just have a few small adjustments to make. It involves very precise and meticulous mechanics, understand? Not really. Will it take long? I'm sorry to insist, but I also have to give a hand to those unfortunate yukels. I need to help them get across the lake with their herd of ostriches. I'm so worried about them. Once the mechanical leg is at last ready, I can go to the clinic and bring back young Kirk to you. Huh. That way you only have to worry about what happens to the other yukols. 
That, yeah, that would be great. So I don't have to go back to the clinic at all. Yes, sir, please. You okay. do that, Mr. Steiner. That would really be a great help. Yeah. So perfect. But dear Miss Walker, are you aware of what lies in store for the nomads when they reach the other side of the lake? Mm, not really. What on earth's the matter, Mr. Steiner? The next stage of your journey is the poor, cursed town of Baranor. Oh, I see. It has become hell on earth since the time of the last great ostrich migration. Please join me downstairs for a moment, Miss Walker. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Huh, okay. One sip of that stuff and he's back up and running, so yeah. Even though I read the prescription, I still don't really know what's in it, but whatever it is, it's good stuff. What's this? Oh, we could never look at this before. All right, what are we looking for? Oh God, not that cursor again. They need to sort out that problem. <laughs> and, you know, a few others, obviously. Let's see. <laughs> Let's just fling all this around. There you go. What is it, a hammer? Is it a tool? No, it's a film reel. Right. Oh God, she's walking automatically. What's going on? Oh, it's kind of a chore to play this game, honestly. But I'm enjoying it. I'm sort of just pushing through, through the, uh, the bad bits. Right. Hi there. Oh, hang on. I see why I needed it. Okay, so let's put that where it should go. And let's have a look at the film, I guess. Yeah. Presumably this is what he wanted to show me. Lots of Oscars. Oh, dogs? Oh, wow. <laughs> sort of goose stepping their way in. Nice. These automatons look just like my friend Oscar. I guess people put that statue up in the square in their honor. Yeah. Truly magnificent pieces, Nishtvar. The XZ-2000 model is most assuredly one of Hans's major masterpieces. Their mission was to bring back any survivors of the catastrophe to Baltimore, where the victims would receive the best care in doctors and unique And some of them have been there for 20 years. Very usually responsible for linking the town to Baltimore and Baranor every day. Carrying the new type of rescuer to the scene of the drama back the survivors of the catastrophe. So suffered the ravages of a nuclear accident. But according to that film, the automatons you designed with hands should have helped save lots of lives, right? I'm afraid that's not how things went. Because of Captain Obo. Oh, really? Ah, that must be Sarah. Oh, yeah. Please come this way, Miss Walker. She did say she had popped I'll by. I'll introduce you. Oh, no need. I think we've already been acquainted, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I want to know more. What happened with, uh, with Captain Obo? When I tried to talk to him in the tavern, he wouldn't really give me a straight answer or talk to me at all, really. Miss Walker, may I introduce you to Sarah, my granddaughter? Hello again. We've actually already met, haven't we, Sarah? I actually owe Miss Walker a candle. Thanks to her calmness and peace of mind, I'm still here and on my feet. She found my medication and gave it to me before it was too late. Donner Vetta. You don't mean you had another attack, do you? Ah, you're being so very naughty, Grandfather. You absolutely must let Dr. Zemiatine examine you. Come on, stay calm, my little child. When I go to the clinic to take the prosthesis to the young Yukol, I'll stop by and see the good doctor. Until then, why don't you make yourself really useful to Miss Walker? 
She's looking for some way to transport the Yukol caravan to the other side of the lake. That's right. Well, I think I've already found the solution. The boat in the film, the crystal, it must be the ship that's docked in the port. If it was able to transport the automatons you and Hans built, it could carry the ostriches across the lake. Ah, that's not a bad idea. But unfortunately, there's a slight problem of size, dear Miss Walker. Oh? Size? Which? <laughs> the captain's a drunkard. What on earth do you mean? Obo became a poor wreck when he simply abandoned our automatons in Baranor. Ah. Uh, the coward now drowns his sorrows in vodka. That explains it. He's convinced it. that he fled because of the monster in the lake. Heh! <laughs> Apparently, the imbecile saw the monster Himmelgott. So we went back on his tracks, abandoning all the automatons in Baranor, as well as the people they were there to rescue. Grandfather, I know you're still really angry with Captain Obo because he abandoned the automatons that you built with your friend Hans and Baranor. He was supposed to wait for them. They were going to take all the survivors they found in the rubble to the boat and then bring everyone here to safety in Valsambor. But in the end, when he got to the beach at Baranor and saw the disaster and all the dead, he became really afraid. The disease, the radiation, he must have had an uncontrollable panic Radiation. Attack, so he immediately turned back, dumped the machines on the crystal into the lake, and came back empty-handed to Valsambor. And the automatons have been there ever since, in hell. But who knows? Maybe today he'll want to sell. I'm sure Kate will be capable of convincing him to help the Yukels. Let's hope so. I have to go do my waitressing shift in the tavern. Come by and see me later on, okay? Captain Obo will be there. I'm sure he will. Drunk as always. All right then. I'll try and convince Captain Obo. Thank you for everything, Mr. Steiner. I don't know if I really should wish you good luck, dear Miss Walker. Baranur is only an open grave now. Hmm. Well, that sounds kind of ominous, but there you go. We have our task for the future, so this is where I'm going to end this part. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you back next time, where we'll head back to the tavern and talk with Captain Obo. See if we can persuade him. See you then.